Hello. Ayan. All set. live no nakakabaka si yung mga technical trabaho ko, ganito rin yung ginagawa ko. Well, hindi naman ako kinakabahan kasi, well, one setup lang naman dahil parang meeting lang naman siya, di ba? Pero kapag live, iba. Sobrang iba. sa akin, pinigyan man ako ng malina. No?
Ayan, wala. Yan, mali na ako. Oo, yung headset mo. Oh, malinaw. Mas malinaw. Correct. Zoom. Ah, hindi kasi tinanggal ko. Tinanplug ko yung ala ko. Ah, okay. Sige po. Hello?
SLRC's program is a holistic one. It doesn't just cater to your intellectual needs, but as well as the emotional and spiritual. It creates an environment that doesn't let you compete with others, but compete with yourself. Every day, you discover your strengths, your weaknesses, and you just want to become the better version of yourself. You are with lecturers of high caliber who are also very humble and are able to simplify hard concepts. The facilities make you feel like you are at home and it fosters a very good environment for learning. SLRC motivates you to top the board exam. They say you aim for the moon because even if you miss, you fall amongst the stars. And that's exactly what SLRC teaches us every day. I am Eliza Kimberly Yapvillerante, RN, SLRC Top Notcher. Yung ginawa kasi ng SLRC, mag, may, una, ginawa nila ng intensive review. So doon sa program na yun, yung lahat ng mga napag-aralan ko nung college na hirap na hirap akong intindihin, yung ginawa lang ng SLRC parang sobrang dali lang kasi yung mga lectures nila sobrang magagaling and para lang silang, para lang yung feeling ko noon, yung mga lecturers nila, para ko silang mga older brothers and older sisters na kinakausap yung bata. So, ganun yung kanilang level para mas maintindihan ng mga nagre-review yung, uh, yung kinuturo nila. And then, yung pagtuturo nila is that ginagawa lang nilang magaan yung nag enjoy ka habang natututo. Yun yung pinakamagandang experience doon kasi akala ko nang dati na mag-review ako, magiging para maabot yung dream, dapat magiging tayong sobrang serious. Pero hindi yun yung nangyari. Ginawa nilang <laughs> Uh, masaya kaya mas lalo kong naintindihan yung aking pinag-aralan. I am Paolo I. Bernardino, SLRC, Top Nature. I chose SLRC because I was amazed during a demo lecture. It was rich in content and very organized. Also, I heard from a friend of mine who graduated ahead of me that SLRC is the best. Great thing I listened because I experienced it myself. SLRC motivated me to be on top by constantly telling me that I can reach for my dreams. Also, those low scores I got from their difficult exams challenged me to strive harder and to persevere. I am Micah Marie Estesidario, RN, SLRC Top Notcher. Great experiences in SLRC. First, let's talk about the program. What I like about SLRC's Let Review program is that it is a complete package. Why did I say that it's a complete package? It includes series of check mechanisms, which includes pre-test, post-test, exam drills per concept, and the predictor examinations, which also includes rationalization. So kita-kita pa lang natin, programa pa lang para sa mga estudyante, talagang kompletong-kompleto na. Hindi lang na-emphasize ang concepts, kundi yung mga application din ito in the actual test taking. So here in SLRC, they train you to answer a lot of difficult questions. So when I was taking my board exam, I found that the questions here in SLRC were actually much more difficult than the board exam itself. So it gave me a huge sigh of relief when I was taking the exam. So a big part of my motivation was actually the lecturers here in SLRC. They guided me throughout the review program. Well, for me personally, I'm weak with community health nursing as well as maternal and child nursing. So what I did was I consulted them and they helped me work on my weaknesses. And I am John Jeffrey Go, SLRC RN, SLRC US RN. Good afternoon, nurses. Welcome to St. Louis Review Center and welcome to our five-day free lecture series for all nurses pursuing the board exam brought to us by the largest and the most trusted review center in the Philippines, and that's no other than St. Louis Review Center. So for today's session, we will be covering one of the most interesting topics in psychiatric nursing and, of course, one of the most common questions in the board examination entitled Substance 
use disorder. So before we get started, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Professor Domingo El Bautista. I'm one of the resident lecturers in St. Louis Review Center, and I've been conducting lecture for the past seven years. And I am so happy since I was invited on this five free day online series lecture brought to us again by St. Louis Review Center. Okay, so um, I hope everyone can hear me. I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, I just have some couple of ground rules, okay, before we get started. Of course, rule number one, you should pay attention and be attentive in our discussion. So I would definitely appreciate since this is an on live streaming, okay, you can actually put down your comments, you can actually answer and respond to me as much as you can, okay? Number two rule, do not forget to share and like our Facebook page. All you need to do is just to search for SLRC Nation. Right now, we are actually streaming live. So do not forget to like and share to your friends or those people who wanted to take, to take the board examination for this year. Okay? Be proactive. Again, you can comment down below. Always remember that sharing is caring. Caring and caring is enrolling to St. Louis Review Center. Our classes starts effective on June 8th. So don't forget to miss that out. The numbers are available as it flashes in your screen right now. Okay. So again, our topic for today is substance use disorder. Now, before we get started, I know some of you are really interested with this topic, right? But first, let's Let's define what substance use disorder is, okay? When we say substance use disorder, it is defined according to the DSM-5 or the Diagnostic Statistics Manual of Mental Disorder authored or postulated by the APA, also known as the American Psychiatric Association. They simply define substance use disorder are a characterization or characterized by an array of mental physical, and behavioral symptoms that may, be, that may cause problems related to loss of control, strain in one's interpersonal life, hazardous use, and of course, it involves tolerance and withdrawal. In short, it can also lead to what we know as substance addiction. Okay, are you with me? Okay, very good. But before we continue, by the way, guys, I want to ask all of you, all right? Um, I know that you are already prepared to take the board examination, but always remember, even though that um, we will be taking the board exam towards the later part of the year, do not forget to miss your motivation in life. So I will be asking you from time to time as we proceed with our lecture, okay? I'm going to ask you, what is your goal? And I want everyone to respond, okay, to top the board exam. And when you say it, I want you to say it with conviction, okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Again, you can comment down below. Again, SLRC, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Paulit-ulit, ha? Again, St. Louis Review Center, SLRC, what is your goal? To top the board exam, okay? Always keep on repeating that. Remember, it's only you who can motivate yourself, okay? It's not your parents. It's not your friends who will pass you or let you pass the board examination. So that motivation should always start from yourself, okay? I will also ask everyone, okay? Please remember, um, it's a power of the mind that will let you pass the board exam. So I will ask you from time to time, show me your license. So everyone, I want you to show me your license and I want you to wave something or similar to this, okay? So I want you to imagine that you already have that license in you before we continue or before we proceed with our lecture, okay? Everyone, I want you to share all your license. Again, we are live streaming, so please comment down below and I want to see all those responses. All right, nurses, again, what is your goal? Again, SLRC, what is your goal? St. Louis Review Center, show me your license. Very good, okay? So now you can feel it. Remember, the power of the mind. Always think of it, huh? The power of the mind. The power of your mind will help you not just to simply 
pass the board exam, but of course, to top the board exam. Kung ano ang inisip mo, yun ang mangyayari. So kung nai-imagine mo na na ikaw ay papasa sa board exam, of course, papasa ka. But of course, you don't just simply dream to pass the board exam. Everybody wants to top the board exam. And this is a good start where we will be preparing you as early as possible. But of course, on top of that preparation, I want you to also prepare yourself mentally and emotionally, right? Keep that momentum on. That's why we are starting this class as early as June 8th, okay? Again, June 8th. And also, don't forget to share, like our FB page. That's SLRC Nation, okay? Okay, so again, going back to my topic, substance use disorder, tatandaan ninyo ha, this is one of the most common questions in the board exam. Since we started, I passed the board exam way back 2007, up until now, the Department of Health, along with the Board of Nursing, never stops adding questions regarding this particular topic, okay? So the flow of our discussion, of course, we will start with an introduction. And then, of course, we're going to teach you some of the techniques and strategies that you can apply so that you can easily understand and memorize the concepts of substance use disorder, okay? We will be teaching you with acronyms and mnemonics. And at the same time, later on towards the end of our discussion, we're going to have a quick recap of those topics, okay? Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. All right, so let's get started. Once again, guys, again, the definition according to the DSM-5, when we say substance use disorder, these are actually characterized by an array, okay? So when we say array, it's an arrangement. Correct? It may be start affecting you mentally, then it disrupts your activities of daily living, which means it interrupts you physically or physiologically. And of course, if someone responds to changes in terms of behavioral symptoms, that's why it is called as an array. Okay? Sunud sunud yan, mga anak. Now, always remember that substance use disorder is associated with what? With addiction. If there is a prolonged use of these substances, it can also lead to addiction. That's why it becomes a problem. That's why it becomes a mental condition. Okay? Patient might suffer from psychosis. Patient may experience um, delusion, illusion, hallucination associated with complications of substance use disorders. Nagkakaintindihan tayo. Did you get it? Did you get it? Again, comment down below. Did you get it, everybody? Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. Now, this is very, very important before we continue. Of course, some of you might be asking, no, what are the statistics with involved or with regard to your substance use disorder? Now, according to the World Health Organization, right, the most highest abuse substance is no other than cannabis sativa. All right. Probably some of you are already aware what cannabis is, but the perfect example of your cannabis will be your marijuana. In short, some of you might call it as MJ or probably Mary J. That accounts for a total of 192 million worldwide population. Okay, I'll repeat, 192 million. Okay, so napakarami, that's worldwide population. That is the most common substance being abused, again, provided to us by the World Health Organization. That statistics alone will help us better understand that this should be taken seriously. Yes or no? Yes. Followed by, of course, you have your narcotics, such as your opioids, which is for 34 million and your amphetamines or your prescription drugs, okay? Ano ba yung mga example ng mga amphetamines na yan? Very good. I think a lot of you are commenting right now. Um, I've been seeing, yes, sir, it's methamphetamine hydrochloride, um, also known as your shabu, okay? That's the number two. Now, here in the country, according to the Department of Health, right? According to the DOH, right? The top two most common substances being abused in the country, I'm talking about the Philippines, 
Number one would still be marijuana, okay? Also known as your cannabis, followed by none other than shabu. Uh, di ba? Nakapapanood yun naman yan sa TV. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, di ba? Shabu, nahulihan, kaya nga nagawa yung, yung tokang, eh, di ba? Kasi kalat yan sa buong bansa. Shabu. Okay? Very good. Now, again, that statistics is provided to us by the World Health Organization. Followed by 21 million that accounts for your ecstasy. Ah, uh, di ba? Some of you will say, ah, sir, yan ba yung party drug that can cause illusion, hallucination? Yes, also known as psychedelics. Okay? Everybody say psychedelics. Psychedelics. Very good. Again, everybody say psychedelics. Psychedelics. Ah, uh, di ba? That impairs or provides or results to a visual hallucination. Ayan. Ecstasy. Party drugs. Okay? Next will be your opiates. Okay? Opiates. And lastly, you have your cocaine that accounts for 18 million. Again, these are the numbers and the facts according to the statistics provided by the World Health Organization. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Ah, di ba? Again, SLRC, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Napakadali lang ng substance use disorder. Hindi ko alam bakit napakaraming nahihirapan dyan, okay? The most important thing that you need to remember about substance abuse disorder, of course, are the key terms, right? It's what you call now the common language of nurses, okay? Now, this language or the terms that I will be sharing with you Okay, is according to the NIH. Okay, that's the National Health Institute of Substance Use or Substance Abuse. Okay, let's define these terms one by one. Now, it is important for you to understand these terms because it will help you get a picture of what substance use disorders is. Okay, ang gagawin mo na lang, lalaruin mo na lang yung mga signs and symptoms based on the effect of those substances. Nakakaintindihan tayo. Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay, great. Good, good. Again, comment down below, ha? I want you guys to be lively. I want you to become participative. Being proactive means you are learning. Did you get it? Okay, good. Now, let's start first by defining this definition, okay? Let's start first by defining this definition. First key term that you would need to remember is the word substance abuse. Oh, ano daw yan, sir? When we say substance abuse, it is defined as a use of a drug. Okay? It is a use of a drug against social norms. Uulitin ko, ha? Isulat mo, ha? Ay, hindi ko isusulat dito yan. Okay? More of that details will be discussed on your national review. So I want you to take down notes. Bibigyan lang kita ng mga key terms. But if you want, guys, para mas, mas save yung time mo or your energy mo, you just have to list those down and then please, please find your own definition. That's totally fine. Walang problema yan. Or if you want, you have the definition to yourself, then you can share it by posting it or commenting down below. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay, good. Right. Again, I'll repeat. Substance abuse, it is a use of a drug against social norms. I'll repeat, ha? Substance abuse, it is a use of a drug against social norms. So, ano ibig sabihin nun, sir? Let's say, wala ka namang sakit ng ulo, right? But you're not feeling well. And then suddenly you get a prescription of a drug known or named as a Vamigram. Oh, di ba? Pero hindi naman talaga masakit ang ulo mo. Then that will be considered as what? Substance abuse. Are you with me? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Okay. Again, use of a drug against social norms. That is how they define the word substance abuse. The next one will be your Tolerance. Oh, sir, tolerance. What do we mean by tolerance? Oh, okay. I want you to listen and I want you to pay attention. Ha? Makinig ng mabuti. When we say tolerance, there is an increased dosage of a drug. Okay? I'll repeat. Increased dosage of a drug to obtain its desired effect. Oh, 
di ba? I'll repeat. Increase dosage of a drug to obtain its desired effect. Oh. So halimbawa, you are taking tramadol. Kasi medyo nakakasakit, medyo masama yung pakiramdam mo, right? You're feeling painful for this day. Let's say, probably, masakit ang ngipin mo, masakit yung kasukasuan mo. So you'll be taking an analgesic, correct? And one of that is tramadol. Oh my God, sobrang taas, right? You started with a small dose. However, you find a relief in taking that tramadol. Then the following day, you experience the same pain. Okay, the same amount of pain. However, what happened was when you take the same amount of that tramadol, okay, you no longer feel that you are being relieved. So what are you going to do now? You will now increase that dosage. Ang tawag don sa pag-increase ng dosage is tolerance. Okay, did you get it? Okay, very good. So again, everybody say tolerance. All right. I'll be asking you, ha. Comment down below. I'm not seeing the word tolerance, ha. Comment down below. I need to see the word tolerance. Everybody, say tolerance. Okay. Increase dosage of a drug to obtain its desired effect. Okay. I'll repeat. Increase dosage of a drug to increase its desired effect. That is the word tolerance. Okay. Okay, very good. The next word would be your withdrawal syndrome. Okay, withdrawal syndrome. What do you mean by withdrawal syndrome? This is a combined physical and psychological effects if there is a sudden stoppage of the drug. Ah, again, ha? I'll repeat. When we say withdrawal syndrome or withdrawal symptoms, it's the same. Pareho lang yan. As long as there's the word withdrawal. This is a combined physical and psychological effects. If a person or an individual suddenly stops, oh, bigla mong hininto yung pagtitake na medication. So, tama ba? Tama ba na duloy-tuloy ang pagtitake ng medication? Of course not, because that can also lead to addiction. Diba? Pero kapag hininto mo siya, hindi rin maganda. Kasi bakit? Lalabas ang mga withdrawal symptoms. Uulitin ko ha. It can be physical or it can be mental or psychological. Okay? Very good. Okay, let's wait. I think a lot of you are commenting. I think ang daming nakikinig. And thank you for actually joining this session. Okay? Thank you for joining this session. May mga nagpapabate. Uh, I'm actually reading some of the comments and uh, thank you so much. Let me just share my screen. Ayan. Okay. So there. Can you all see my screen, guys? Nakikita niyo ba yung screen ko? Nakikita niyo yung PowerPoint ko? All right. So there. So we've discussed about the definition of substance abuse. We also discussed the definition of tolerance. We also discussed the definition of withdrawal. Uulitin ko, ha? Uh, substance abuse, it is use of a drug against social norms. When we say tolerance, this is an increased dosage of a drug to obtain its desired effect. Next will be your withdrawal syndrome. When we say withdrawal syndrome, again, it can be physical or it can be psychological if a person suddenly stops taking that medication. Okay? Very good. And the next will be your what? The next definition will be intoxication. Okay? Intoxication. When we say intoxication, mga anak, what does that mean? Sige, hintayin ko ha. If I will start, if I will just check, are you all seeing my screen? Nakikita nyo ba yung screen ko, mga anak? Are you with me? Ayan. 
Ayan. Okay na? Okay na. Okay. Alright. Sige. Very good. Okay. My apologies to that. Kasi kanina, I think the screen is not showing. But right now, as you can see, we're not far from our topic or discussion pa naman. So I've already discussed substance abuse, tolerance, withdrawal syndrome, and of course, the word intoxication. The next, when we say intoxication, sir, ano po ba yung ibig sabihin ng salitang intoxication? This is use of a substance that can result into a maladaptive behavior. Oh, isulat mo, ha? Isulat mo. I'm not gonna give that definition. I'm just saying it right now. As nurses, you need to practice shutting down notes. So bring out your notebooks, bring out your pens, make sure that you have that readily available while listening to this discussion or topic. But for those who are already enrolled, I will be covering this again in your national review. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? What is your goal, nurses? To top the board exam. Okay. I'll repeat, ha? Let's go back. Intoxication, this is use of a substance which results into a maladaptive behavior. I'll repeat. Use of a substance which results in a maladaptive pattern of behavior. Oh, ano naman ang ibig sabihin niyan, mga anak? When we say um, intoxication, you will see later on the different sets of signs and symptoms, correct? Huwag kayong magtataka, meron siyang violent behavior that you can capture or you can identify, which means that's part of what? Part, part of the effects while the client or the patient is intoxicated from a specific substances. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo. In short, ano ba yung epekto nito sa tao? It can be short term or it can be long term. Okay? Because of the effects of those substances that is being used or abused by that patient. Another definition will be your substance dependence or substance addiction. Oh! Ano naman ang ibig sabihin niyan? When we say substance dependence or addiction, it is defined as, simplihan lang natin ha, minention ko kanina yung salitang tolerance. So when you say tolerance, increase dosage of a drug to obtain its desired effect, correct? Plus, added by withdrawal symptoms, okay? Bigla niyang hininto yung pagtitake ng medication, okay? Withdrawal symptoms. So, kapag may withdrawal symptoms, of course, you need to control that withdrawal symptoms. So, the tendency is that client might take, again, that medication or prescription. Now, magiging cycle ba to? Yes, very good. Magiging cycle ba to? Sumagot, sumagot. Yes, sir. Again, ang tanong ko, my question to you is, magiging cycle ba to? Paulit-ulit ba to? Yes or no? Sumagot. Sumagot, comment down below, ha? Comment down below. The answer is, yes, sir. Paulit-ulit po yan. Kasi hindi minsan mamamanage ng mga clients ang mga withdrawal symptoms. Kasi may mga malalalang withdrawal symptoms. That is correct. Very good, okay? Tama yan, totoo yan. Now, if it's prolonged, that will be now defined as what you call substance dependence, also known as your Addiction. In short, nagiging addict na ang isang tao. Kahit na hindi kumain, kahit na hindi matulog, basta makapagsyabu, basta makapagmariwana, ayan, ang tawag sa kanila, addict na. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Did you get it? Did you get it? Ang dali lang, di ba? These are words which probably may be complicated for you, for some. But as you can see, these are just normal words, correct? The most important thing is you understand the language of substance use disorder. And once that you can easily now understand the concept, as we proceed with those substances later, it will be easier for you to recall and understand. And of course, carry the appropriate nursing interventions for each specific conditions of your client who are diagnosed for having a substance use disorder. Okay? Oh, di ba? Comment down below. I've been seeing a lot of comments. Thank you for joining. And again, do not forget to share 
And of course, like our FB page, that's SLRC Nation. Now, let's go back to the definition of terms, okay? The next definition of terms will be your codependence. Oh, ano naman ang codependence, sir? What does that mean? I think some of you are already familiar with this one. When we say codependence, it is defined as any person, okay? Any person, or we call them significant others, it can be related or not related to that person. And what does it do? Ano yung role niya? They're the ones who's tolerating the abusers. Ang tawag sa kanila is codependence. I'll repeat, ha? Significant others that tolerate abusers is simply defined as your codependence. So pwede ba siya yung maging nanay mo? Yes, sir. Very good. Comment down below, ha? Pwede ba siya yung maging tatay mo? Yes, sir. Pwede ba siya yung kalivin mo? Yes, sir. Pwedeng-pwede po. Pwede ba siyang tsahin mo? Yes, sir. Pwede palang codependence. Any significant person from that abuser, okay, can be considered or can be known as your codependence. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Very good. Very good. I think a lot of you are participating. Guys, ha? let's participate. Comment down below. This is live streaming. Okay? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity being offered to you by St. Louis Review Center. So please, don't forget to share and like. Okay? The next one will be, of course, your... The word detoxification, di ba? Napakadali lang nitong subject na to, na topic na to sa board exam, no? Detoxification, how do we define it? Okay? Of course, kanina we mentioned about withdrawal, right? Correct? When we say withdrawal, sudden stoppage of the medication or the prescription and then lalabas ang physical and psychological symptoms. When we say detox detoxification, this is the opposite. When we say detoxification, this is safely withdrawing from the drug. Oh, safely withdrawing from the drug. Oh, uulitin ko ha. Safely withdrawing from the drug. In short, are we talking about tapering? Correct, okay? Unti-unti, dahan-dahan, gradual decrease for the person to become free from that substances. Ang tawag doon sa proseso na yon is detoxification. Sir, are we talking about treatment? Of course, the answer is yes. Okay? The goal is for the person who's a victim of substance use disorder is to be free from any substances. A first perfect example will be your alcoholic, right? Ano ba yung ultimate goal? So, di ba? Meron tayong goals. It can be Long term or it can be short term, right? Pero ano ba yung goal? Of course, it has to be long term for that alcoholic patient to abstain or free from alcohol. That's the reason why this alcoholic patient can be subjected for a, a process known as your detoxification. Not just, of course, alcoholism, ha? Huh? I want you to pay attention. But for other most commonly substances abuse, it can be cannabis, it can be marijuana, it can be cocaine, it can be any form of sedative hypnotics. Those examples of any substances, which we're going to discuss later, will subject for detoxification. Again, Let's define detoxification, ha? Huh? Safely withdrawing from the drug or from the prescription. Okay? And next definition will be your antidote. Oh, ah, ano daw yung antidote, sir? When we say antidote, it is defined as reversing. Yun yung proseso niya, no? Reversing the poisonous effect of the drug. To repeat, ha? Huh? Reverse the poisonous effect of the drug. Okay? Halimbawa, ang isang patient mo nagtitake ng tinatawag nating inhalants. O, inhalants, right? Example of that inhalants will be your volatile uh, solutions, right? Like yung thinner, rugby, gas, yung mga aerosols, yan, yung mga Lysol ninyo, yan, mga fertilizer. And then all of a sudden, this patient who's taking inhalants suddenly stops from taking that substance. So, magwi-withdrawal na siya. Tama? Okay. Now, ngayon, ang mangyayari is he or this person will definitely take what? Or suffer from a condition known as withdrawal symptoms. And the most detrimental will be seizures. Okay? Seizures. Everybody say seizures. Okay? Very good. Seizures. 
Everybody, again, I'll repeat. Remember, repetition is recall. The key to mastery is through repetition. Kapag inuulit-ulit mo magiging isang bagay, you will be able to develop a mastery of it. That's why I'm encouraging each and every one of you to please say it and repeat it again. Okay? Repeat the words that I'm saying dahil ito yung common na lumalabas na mga salita sa board examination. And of course, in the board examination, dapat proficient ka. Correct? It's all about familiarization of those terms for you to easily understand and execute the right answer. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Now, going back. So, seizures, anong ibibigay mo to manage seizures? Very good. Okay? Sige. Comment down below. Kapag may seizure, ano yung binibigay? Come on. Comment down below. Seizures, ano yung kadalasang binibigay? Comment down below. I'm seeing right answers right now. Kapag may seizures, right, very good. Ano ang kadalasang binibigay dyan? Comment down below. Again, I'm encouraging everyone to post their answer. Ano yung binibigay na gamot? Okay? That will be very good. Okay? Magnesium sulfate. Okay? That's the right answer, no? Magnesium sulfate. Now, of course, magnesium sulfate can be poisonous. Tama ba? Yes, it can be poisonous, sir. So if it's poisonous, we need to reverse the poisonous effect of that magnesium sulfate. Now, here's my, another, here's my other question to you. What will be the antidote of magnesium sulfate? Oh, again, what will be the antidote of magnesium sulfate? What is the antidote of your magnesium sulfate? Okay? Antidote for your magnesium sulfate. Guys, I've been seeing, sir, diazepam. No, it's not diazepam for seizures. Nagkakaintindihan? It's your magnesium sulfate. However, magnesium sulfate is poisonous kapag sobrang dami din. That's why we need to administer an antidote for that magnesium sulfate. And that antidote for that magnesium sulfate will be your very good, I've been seeing right answers here, will be your calcium gluconate. Okay? That's your calcium gluconate. Okay? I'll repeat, ha? That's your calcium gluconate. Kapag nasagutan mo yun, tanong ko na yun kanina, then it's a sign, ha? Makinig, mga anak, it's a sign that you are ready to take the board examination. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Very good, okay? So you have your substance abuse, you have your tolerance, withdrawal syndrome, intoxication, addiction, codependence, detoxification, and of course, the word antidote. Madalas at common yan na lumalabas sa board examination. Okay? Now, what are the causes why a patient or a person suffers from a substance use disorder? Isa-isahin natin yan. So let's go back to the theory, no? First will be your family systems theory, okay? Family systems theory. When we say family systems theory, it is somewhat associated with the word enmesh. Ibig sabihin, untangled. Ibig sabihin nun, hiwa-hiwala yung pamilya. Tama? Di ba minsan kapag college, itong mga bata na to, to ako, dumating din ako nung college years ko, right? We want to become free from our parents. We want to start, right, practicing our own, right? Deciding on our own. And it's very, very important for us to build that independence. However, according to this theory, some population consider or use that as what? As a rebellion, Okay. If there is an increased dependence, okay, or a feel that they increases their own independence, then that will somewhat lead to a rebellion. Tama ba? Because pag mag-isa ka, di ba, you feel isolated. And when you are isolated, mga anak, you will depend on something. And that dependency is dependency to a particular substance. Okay? That is again according to your family systems theory. Another theory that is involved, aside from the family systems theory, will be your socio-cultural theory. Oh, socio-cultural. Makinig, ha? According to this theory, the reason why a person or an individual suffers from a substance use disorder, it's simply because of poverty. So, 
statistics shows that 75% of those victims of substance abuse is somewhat related to poverty. Because para sa mga may hirap daw, okay, um, they feel that every time that they take a substance, there, there's a feeling or that gives them a sense of hope. May pag-asa. Ay, mag-inuman na lang tayo kasi lahat naman eh, right? Umiinom. May parang pangtanggal problema daw sa kanila yon, Correct? Kung baga, mas nakakaisip daw sila, mas nakakaroon daw sila ng panahon para papano kumita ng pera by taking those alcohol or those substances. Okay? That is again according to your socio-cultural theory. Another theory that is involved is your psychodynamic theory. Oh, di ba? Ang mayaman, psychodynamic theory. So, what do we mean by psychodynamic theory? It says here that uh, there are also some population, right? That when they say psychodynamic, every time that they are taking these substances, it helps them enhances their self-esteem. Diba? Yan ang unang papasok sa utak mo, yung Maslow's hierarchy of needs, remember? Maslow's hierarchy, you have physiologic, safety, security, oh, diba? Oh, sumasagot. Very good, that's right. And one of those needs is your self-esteem. Tama ba? Yes or no? Okay? Self-esteem. So, for them to feel that they are confident, right? For them to feel that they are enough, what some people does or addict do is to take those substances. Okay? That's according to your psychodynamic theory. Another theory that is involved will be your psychoanalytic. Oh, and dami namang theory namang involved na yan, sir. Yes, okay? Psychoanalytic. Everybody say psychoanalytic. Oh, question sa lahat, ha? I want you to comment down below. When you hear the word psychoanalytic, sino yung kauna-unahang tao ang naiisip ninyo? When you say psychoanalytic, also known as your psychoanalysis. Oh. Psychoanalysis. Again, comment down below. Everybody, I want you to comment down below. Sino yung pinakakilalang tao? The father of your psychoanalysis. That's no other than... Oh, very good. Okay, I'm seeing right answers. Oh, relax lang, ha? Isang sagot lang. Oh, bigyan mo ng chance, bigyan mo ng chance ng space yung iba. Okay? All right, that's no other than Sigmund Freud. Very good, okay? So, when say Sigmund Freud, mga anak, di ba? We have stages. Everybody say OA palagi. So, you have your oral stage, anal stage, phallic stage, you have your latency stage, and of course, you have your... Oral, anal, phallic, latency, and the last stage will be your genital stage. Okay? Genital stage. Now, according to this theory, okay, nagkaroon daw ng problem. On what specific stage? Okay? Saan daw nagkaroon ng problem? Saan daw doon sa stages na yon ang hindi na satisfy? Saan daw sa stages na yon ang hindi na satisfy? Leading to a substance use disorder, also known as your addiction. Okay? Anong stage daw? Is it oral, anal, phallic, latency, or genital stage? Sumagot, ha? Comment down below. Sumagot, mga anak. Sumagot. Sa ang stage daw? According to psychoanalytic theory postulated by Sigmund Freud. I'll repeat, ha? Ano ang sagot? What stage daw nagkaroon ng problem? Okay? That's no other than, of course, no other than your oral stage. During that stage, nakakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na oral fixation. There is unsatisfied need of the mouth. Correct? Unsatisfied needs of the mouth. Oral. Okay? Very good. Pag hindi daw nasatisfy you needs orally, that that can also lead to substance addiction, also known as Substance use disorder. Ay, sobrang napaka-hyper ng lahat. Right now, there are a total of 170 viewers, right? Please share. Do not forget to share this page, right? We are streaming live. And I want you to invite your friends who have not taken the board exam yet and who's willing to become a top natcher. Please invite them and do so, Okay. Very good. So I think all of you are following to the topics that I'm covering. I know some of you are sharing feedback, sir. That's a very interesting topic. Um, it's like, okay, very good. 
at least now you're learning, okay? Don't worry, we have the rest of two hours and we're going to cover all these topics within the next two hours, okay? Again, our topic for today is about substance use disorder. So we are now discussing the causes why a person or an individual suffers from a substance use disorder. Nakakaintindihan tayo? Very good. Next will be, of course, another theory is your neurobiologic theory. Oh, makinig, ha? According to studies, this is the most accepted theory in understanding the mechanism of action, in understanding uh, the etiology of why a person suffers from substance use disorder. Now, according to neurobiologic theory, there are two components, mga anak, ha? There are two components. First is genetics. Ah, oh, di ba? Genetic. Ibig sabihin nun, family history mo. Kapag ang nanay mo, okay, is alcoholic, for example, right? At ang tatay mo is alcoholic, then you are susceptible or vulnerable to become an alcoholic, that accounts for a total of 60%. Oh, di ba? Chances are, 60% pwede kang maging alcoholic. Nagkakaintindihan tayo. Not just alcoholic, but, you know, substance user. Uh, nakukuha. Again, ilang percent? Very good. 60% vulnerability. Napakataas. Tama? That is somewhat associated with... Um, with a receptor known as your MU opioid receptor 1, okay, because of that high susceptibility. I'll repeat, ha? Um, don't worry, guys, because I will share this if you enroll to SLRC. So do not forget to like and share. And of course, call the number below the screen flashing. Start enrolling now because we will be covering all these topics, okay? Very good. Again, it's your MU opioid receptor. Okay? Now, this MU opioid receptor is a docking site for your neurotransmitter beta endorphin. And we, when we say endorphin, di ba? This will somewhat gives you, it is a hormone as well, correct? But it sometimes gives you, or most of the time, it gives you a sense of feeling happy and satisfied. Endorphins, correct? Kaya pansin mo, magugulat ka, meron dyan matagal na hindi umiinom, tapos kapag uminom, napakasaya nila, right? And probably, if you will track the history, of, if you will just check their familiar history, naku, lahat pala manginginom sa pamilya, tinray niyang kontrolin, pero nung uminom, alan, ayan, nangyari, naging alcoholic, di ba? Are you with me? Very good. Again, 60%, ha? 60%. Kaya prone sila, susceptible sila, mabilis silang maging addict. Oh, nakukuha, mabilis silang maging addict. Very good. Another factor or another that you have to consider in terms of the neurobiologic theory will be your what? Biochemical. Okay? Biochemical. Palitan ko lang yung highlight ha para ma-change naman natin. Okay? So again, you have your genetic and you also have your Biochemical. So, again, everybody say biochemical. Okay? So, when we say biochemical, of course, I think a lot of you knows that the only responsible for this biochemical theory will be the involvement of your neurotransmitters. Okay? Neurotransmitters. When we say neurotransmitters, these are chemical substances found in the brain responsible in transmitting or sending impulses from one synapse to another. Sir, napakahaba niyan, okay? I'll repeat, ha? Sulat mo na lang, chemical substances found in the brain. Ito ba yung nasa loob ng neuron? The answer is yes. Ano yung nakikita sa neuron? Chemical substances. Ano yung chemical na yun? Ang tawag doon is neurotransmitters. Nagkakaintindihan tayo, okay? Neurotransmitters ang tawag doon, mga anak, okay? Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Now, question sa'yo, nurse, ha? Question. What are the most common substances, okay, involved in affecting these neurotransmitters, right? Ano ba yung kadalasang involved? Sino ba yung proactive na neurotransmitters kapag pinag-uusapan natin ang substance use disorder? There are three major neurotransmitters involved. Can you all see my screen? Okay. Can you all see my screen? Very good. 
First will be your dopamine pathway. Okay? Dopamine, also known as the reward pathway. I'll repeat, ha? Dopamine, which is also serves as the reward pathway. Okay? It controls our emotions to become high, right? Siya yung nag-i-innervate doon. Siya yung um, nagsuserve or nagpa-function. Correct? Right? Since it's a reward pathway, pathway, ano yung mga organs involved when we talk about dopamine? First, you have this what we call dopaminergic pathways. Ano ba yung mga parts ng brain doon sa tinatawag nating dopaminergic pathways? Of course, you have this prefrontal cortex. You also have your nucleus accumbens. And you also have your ventral tegmentum. I will share the pathophysiology if you enroll to St. Louis Review Center. Again, it will start on June 8. Are you with me? Okay. Very good. Ito, parang mga ano lang to. Slideshows, right? Yung mga a glimpse of what we can offer here at SLRC. Okay? Next will be your norepinephrine. Now, your norepinephrine goes throughout your system goes throughout your brain. So when you say goes throughout your brain, it has an effect to your physiological responses. Okay? Pwede kang magkaroon ng tinatawag nating increased energy or decreased energy, right? It has something to do with sympathetic and parasympathetic response. Uh, I'll repeat, ha? it is somewhat involved to either sympathetic or parasympathetic response. It is also responsible for fight and flight response. Very good, okay? Again, comment down below. Very good. The next neurotransmitter involved when we talk about substance use disorder will be your serotonin. Everybody say serotonin. Serotonin. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam, everybody say serotonin. Okay. Now, your serotonin now affects your mood, right? We're talking about emotions, right? We're involving the way how you respond. We're involving your feelings that makes you feel happy, makes you feel sad, makes you feel high. Ayan, that is your serotonin, okay? Serotonin, mood, or affect. The next will be your GABA. When you say GABA, it is what? Excitatory or inhibitory? It is inhibitory, meaning it is used as an off switch. Okay? It is responsible for relaxation. Kabalik tara naman yan si gluta. Okay? Now, si glutamate naman is excitatory. Okay? Again, si glutamate is excitatory. Si GABA, off switch. Therefore, si gluta, on switch. It is responsible for neuronal finding. Okay? Neuro neuronal firing. I'm sorry. Neuronal firing. GABA and gluta are neurotransmitters involved in a condition known as your alcoholism. Okay? Alcoholism. Again, it's alcoholism. Did you get it? Did you get it? Comment down below, ha? Comment down below. Again, everyone, comment down below if you can follow or if you can still follow with our lecture, okay? So we have discussed, of course, an introduction to what substance use disorder is. We've already discussed, of course, the factors or the causes, okay? Now let's proceed now with just a quick recap of your structure of the nervous system. Earlier, we've mentioned about your norepinephrine, tama ba ako? which is responsible for flight and flight. So this is the nervous system. Nervous system is divided into two parts. You have your central and you also have your peripheral. Under your CNS, that involves your brain and your spinal cord. And under your PNS or your peripheral nervous system involves, of course, your ANS and your somatic, automatic and somatic. Your ANS is responsible for involuntary muscle movement. I'll repeat that. Huh? Your ANS is responsible for your involuntary, autonomic, okay? Autonomic or autonom automatic, okay? Now, your somatic now is responsible for voluntary movement, okay? Voluntary movement. And then, of course, under your autonomic is divided into two. You have your parasympa and you also have your sympathetic nervous system. And why am I discussing this structure? Because it will help you better understand about signs and symptoms of all these substances and how it affects your body. 
or how it affects your patient's or your client's body. I'll repeat, ha? Autonomic nervous system, you have your parasympa, and you also have your sympathetic nervous system. Parasympa, conservation, and then sympa, very good. Fight or flight. Nakakainin yan tayo. Are you with me? Okay, nakukuha? Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Sir, I know what? I, uh, uh, my apologies, but I cannot actually uh, read some of your statements. But let me give time to you to read some of the comments here. Sir, um, consider, okay? I know that you are involving yourself in participating, but stand na binabasta ko siya. Um, just make sure to comment, okay? It's important for you to give your live feedback to us. Important yan, okay? And to those who haven't joined, please share this to your friends, to your relatives, okay? Friend, please uh, share the SLRC Nation FB page to those who are willing and who wanted to top the board examination. Okay? Okay, very good. Next will be, of course, now, we're talking about the different parts of the body. Pero papasadahan lang natin yan. So you have your parasympathetic and your sympathetic division. Correct? Your parasympathetic is responsible for what? Vasodilation or vasoconstriction? Comment down below. Comment down below. Okay? Parasympathetic. Is it vasodilation or vasoconstriction? Okay? Is it vasodilation or vasoconstriction? Parasympathetic, mga anak. Listen to me, ha? Parasympathetic. Ano yung effect niya? Ano yung effect niya? Comment down below. Is it vasodilation or vasoconstriction? We're talking about parasympathetic, ha? Parasympathetic. Vasodilation or vasoconstriction? Okay. It is vasodilation. Correct. Kaya nagkakaroon ng tinatawag nating constricted pupils. How about your sympathetic? Ano naman ang effect niya? Vasodilation or vasoconstriction? Very good. That is now your vasoconstriction. Meaning, ang nangyayari sa pupils, kaya nagkakaroon ng dilation kasi nagkoconstrict. Kaya nagdadilate ang pupils. Nakakaintindihan tayo. That is what you called vasoconstriction. Kinoconstrict ang blood vessels. Kaya nagkakaroon ng dilated pupils. Okay? Yung mga dilat yung mga mata. Most especially if the patient is taking stimulants, right? Okay, very good. Comment down below, ha? Comment down below. So there. Now, question in the board examination. I want you to answer it, okay? I want you to answer this before we proceed to the main topic or to the main discussion, okay? Question in the board exam. After a successful alcohol detoxification, a client remarked to a friend, I tried to stop drinking, but I just can't. Sabi niya, ha? Kumbaga parang sa isip lang niya yun, right? Pero, patient says, I can't even work without having a drink. Oh, the clients believe that the needs alcohol or the need for alcohol indicates his dependence is primarily motivated by what is your answer? Okay, what is your answer? Is it A, psychological, B, physical, C, biological, or letter D, sociocultural? Comment your answer down below. Okay, sumagot mga anak, ha? sumagot. Again, after successful alcohol detoxification, a client remarked to a friend, I've tried to stop drinking, but just can't. I can't even work without having a drink. The client's belief that he needs an alcohol indicates his dependence is primarily motivated by, very good. Is it A, psychological, B, physical, C, biological, or letter D, sociocultural? Comment down below your answer. Sumagot, sumagot, sumagot. Okay? Sumagot, sumagot. Okay? Again. Ang makasagot na to talagang isinusumpa ko, nako, apasa sa board exam. Kaya sumagot ka, ha? Ikaw na nanonood dyan. Huwag ka lang nood na nood sa akin, okay? Answer, participate. Comment down below. This is a live streaming. So please make sure to answer and participate. Remember, you have to be proactive. As an nurse, dapat proactive ka. And because you are proactive, since you all answered letter A, psychological, that is the right answer. Oh, palakpakan. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. 
sir. Maning mani napakadali naman ng tanong. In English lang, di ba? Napaka Ito yung mga tanong na nakakabuisit, tama? Kasi di ba kahit English yan ka, kahit na anong language ang gamitin mo, kahit German pa yan, kahit Swedish pa yan, right? It will boils down to your knowledge, right? To your foundation that these type of questions are critical questions which means that you need to apply your common sense. Nagkakaintindihan tayo? All right? Ang dami nang jumo join right now. We are live streaming and there are a total of 187 viewers. So please keep on watching and please keep on sharing this to all those who wants to take the board examination, okay? Very good. Next is let's proceed now with some of the most common substances that are being used, right? I'll repeat, ha? let's discuss now most common substances that is being arranged. Now, this is according to the DSM-5, also known as your Diagnostic Statistics Manual of Mental Disorders. Now, according to them, right, there are six total. However, here in St. Louis Review Center, okay, um, we normally come up with what you call acronyms or mnemonics for you to easily memorize and understand those substances. Kasi mamaya napakadami masyado, right? And you cannot remember or you cannot recall those substances. I know that this is a very interesting topic, but it can be lengthy for some. Ibig sabihin, masyadong malawak yung scope. So here, we will simplify. We will be teaching you some strategies for you to easily recall these concepts, okay? So I want everyone to say, Sinsha, okay? Sinsha. Everybody say Sinsha. Okay? Again, everybody say Sinsha. Very good. Again, ha? comment down below. Sabihin mo yan sa baba ng comment section. Okay? Again, say Sinsha. Ha? Huh? Ano daw, sir? Sinsha. Okay? Everybody say Sinsha. Sinsha stands for your Stimulants, inhalants, narcotics, sedative hypnotics, hallucinogens, and alcohol. Ah, oh, di ba? Ang galing, di ba? Again, everybody say sinsha. Sumagot, sumagot. So you have stimulants, you have your inhalants, you have your narcotics, sedative hypnotics, you also have your hallucinogens or cannabis, and you also have your alcohol. Again, gusto ko sumisigaw kayo, ha? Say sinsha. O, oh, di ba? Napakadali lang. Hindi mo na kailangan i-memorize lahat ng ituturo ko sa'yo later, okay? All you need to remember is the word sinsha. O, oh, di ba? Sa SLRC mo lang makukuha yan. Nakakaintindihan tayo mga anak, okay? Here, we will be teaching you on how to strategize in answering the most difficult questions. Sa kanila, sa kanila difficult, pero sa iyo easy na. Bakit? Kasi nag-review ka sa SLRC. Oh, di ba? Kaya yung mga nag-enroll diyan sa ibang review center nako, you still have time to enroll to us. Classes will start on June 8. Magkakaintindihan? Again, classes starts on June 8. So please Please invite all your friends, okay? Share the SLRC FB or SLRC Nation FB page, ha? We are available and the classes again will start on June 8. Okay? Very good. Are you with me? Did you get it? Again, say sinsha, everybody. Say sinsha. Oh, you have your stimulants, inhalants, narcotics, sedative hypnotics, hallucinogens, or cannabis, and you also have your alcohol. Again, sumagot. Gusto ko lahat sumagot. Sumagot. Say sinsha. Again, sumagot. Say sinsha. Sinsha. Ayan, nakikita ko yung mga comments nyo. Ha? Again, this is streaming live via Facebook. So please make sure to share it. Again, say sinsha. Very good. First, you have your stimulants, okay? When you say stimulants, other name for stimulants is the word uppers, okay? Uppers. Stimulants, also known as CNS, uppers. These are drugs including those that has an effect in increasing the activity of your central nervous system. 
But aside from your CNS or your central nervous system, of course, it gives us an effect that is pleasurable and of course, invigorating. Pero ano ba yung pinaka-direct effect ng stimulants and uppers na yan? Okay? It has a sympathomimetic effect. Kaya nga ang other term dyan is uppers eh, right? Anong ginagawa niya directly sa yung central nervous system? Excitability, which means increase. Oh. Simpa or para simpa? Comment down below, ha? Comment down below. That is simpa, okay? Sympathetic nervous system. So, naging increase ang vital signs. Very good. Very good. May nakikita ko, nagpo-post na, tachycardia, ay, uh, alam nyo na, ang sagot, tama ba ako, di ba? But question is, ano ba yung mga examples? Oh, can you give us an example, sir, kung ano yung mga stimulants or uppers na yan, correct? First, everybody say CNS. Remember? It has a direct impact to your CNS. Tama ba ako? CNS. So you have your cocaine, you have your nicotine, and you also have your shabu. Okay? Lahat na may letter U. Uh, first, you have your cocaine. Uh, di ba? Cocaine. That's a perfect example. And that is the most common and widely used stimulant or uppers. Huh? Cocaine. Uh, lahat ng may you, ha? Cocaine. Ah, di ba? Cocaine is also known as your party drug. Di ba? Yung mga naglalalabas dyan. Hoy, but again, ha? Yung, yung mga mahilig mag-party dyan before, before the COVID-19 um, pandemic issue. No? Yung mga labas ng labas dyan. Kaya it's not safe for you to go out now. Pwede ka mag-party, but you have to do it digitally, right? Remember, we want to practice social distancing to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Oh, di ba? So there. Another example, di ba? CNS, right? You have your nicotine. Oh, nicotine. Sir, pati ba yung spelling ng nicotine mo? Sinadya ko talaga yan para maintindihan mo yung letter U. Remember? The word upper starts with letter U. So lahat ng mga nababasa mo na may letter U, such as cocaine, right? Oh, di ba? Yung iba natatawa. Next will be your nicotine. Okay? Nicotine. Ano ba yung mga example ng nicotine mo na yan? Okay? Nicotine such as your cigarillo. Oh, di ba? Tabaco. Oh, yes or no? Yes, very good. Ano pa? Marlboro. Yan, very good. Those are examples because the effect of nicotine in the body directly affects your CNS, right? Inhibitory or excitability. That is excitability. Kaya lahat tumataas, nag increase Very good. And of course, another example of your stimulants and uppers will be your shabu, okay? And the scientific name of your shabu will be your metamphetamine hydrochloride. Yan, tinatanong yan sa board exam, ha? Metamphetamine hydrochloride. Common yan dito sa Pilipinas. Common yan dito sa atin, okay? Again, that's your metamphetamine hydrochloride. So these are the three Perfect examples of your stimulants or uppers, okay? You have your cocaine, you have your nicotine, and you also have your shabu. Sir, example pa po ng cocaine. Yan, coke, right? You also have your coffee. Ah, di ba? Cola. Uh, what else? Ano pa? Very good. Meron sumagot dyan, sir. Yung mga energy drink. Yan, cobra. Oh, di ba? Yes, it has a caffeine content, right? Very good. Those are, again, examples of your stimulants or uppers, okay? Now, let's proceed now with your intoxication. Oh, diba? Naalala mo, intoxication. What happens to a person if he's taking or abusing this particular substance known as your stimulants or uppers, okay? Of course, one would be hypervigilance. Remember, ha? Huh? Increase. Sympathetic, right? When you say hypervigilance, right, they are so attentive, correct? That's why some of you, before you start your day, you take coffee because you want it to become as vigilant as you can, as early as possible. When you open your laptop, when you open your computer or your desktops, you check your email and you respond to it very, very quick, right? Because of that effect of the coffee, coffee inside your body. Another intoxication effect, of course, will be your what? Anxiety, right? Remember, 
sympathetic, correct? So malamang anxiety magi-increase din. Anong nangyayari sa norepinephrine? Nagi-increase din. Okay? Kaya nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na anxiety. Of course, vital signs which includes your tachycardia, oh, di ba? Increase basta lahat ng pataas, isagot mo 'yan. Okay? Another one will be of course your Increased energy, also known as hyperactivity. Okay, increased energy, also known as your hyperactivity. Another intoxication symptoms will be insomnia. Right, it affects your sleep cycle. Yeah, ng one of the effects of your stimulants or uppers, di ba? Di ka makatulog. Hirap na hirap ka because your mind is keep on moving. Your CNS is keeps on moving. Right, that's the reason why. You know, it can be. It has a good and a bad effects inside your body. Okay. Another intoxication effects will be dilated pupils, right? Why? Because of vasoconstriction, right? Vasoconstriction na kakaroon ng dilated pupils. Para simpa or simpa. Very good. It is sympathetic nervous system. Very good. Or your SNS. Another intoxication effects. Oh, it to na. Let's proceed with psychological. It also affects a person's mind or thinking. Right? Nakakaroon natin na tawag natin euphoria. Oh, everybody say euphoria. Again, everybody say euphoria. Sumagot. Sumagot sa euphoria. Comment down below. <laughs> Comment down below. All right. Comment down below. Say euphoria. Ayan, may sumasagot na. Okay. Euphoria. Para kang nasa heaven, right? It's because of the body's response to the opioid system or the reward system. Correct. It gives you a sense of what we call now pleasure. Ayan, pleasure. Okay. Pasa pag euphoria, always think of pleasure. Correct. Tama ba? So halimbawa, ikaw binigyan ah matataas ang grades mo, right? Ma halimbawa, um let's say NCM, de ba? Yung pinaka mahirap na subject, right? Most especially MS topics or concepts. Correct? Nakauno ka. For example lang, ha? Example lang. This is to explain to you how the reward system works, okay? So, kapag nakauno ka, syempre that's pleasurable, yes or no? Yes. So, nalaman ng magulang mo, pinadalhan ka ng PS5. Sir, wala pa pong PS5. Paparating na, okay? It was launched on June 4, so meron na, okay? Nakinig. So, it will be launched on June 4, by the way, so meron na. Oh, binigyan ka ng additional na pera, binigyan ka ng pampaparty mo, binigyan ka ng pampashopping mo. Di ba napakasarap ng feeling? Eh, ang ginawa mo lang naman, inuno mo lang naman yung subject mo, yung major subject mo. So, anong mangyayari niyan? Ah, you become addictive now in studying. Nakukuha? So, pag invite ka ng friends mo, Uy, friend, lumabas naman tayo. Hindi pwede kasi mag-aaral ako. Now, you become addictive, right? It becomes pleasurable for you because you know the rewards when you will maintain and get that same score or same grade, which is one in your major subject. Okay, that explains what euphoria is, correct? Very good. Next, you have... Of course, elevated vital signs. We're talking about hypertension. Kasama dyan, okay? Takif niya, pwede rin, sir. Yes, those vital signs, lahat yan elevated, okay? And of course, aside from elevated vital signs, you also have your palpitations. Patient might also experience crashing, okay? It can be both during intoxication and of course, during withdrawal. I'll repeat, ha? Tawag dyan sa word na yan, crashing okay but most likely okay it is someone being experienced during withdrawal symptoms nagkakaintindihan tayo ha during withdrawal symptoms and of course next will be okay syempre you become addicted or addictive to intoxic or uh, to a stimulants or uppers you've been using that for a long period of time okay now because of that prolonged use of this particular substance, 
that can lead to a complication. And that complication is what you call now your chronic perforated nasal septum. Okay? Ang tawag dyan is chronic perforated nasal septum. So, ano ba yung common substance na nagkakos ng chronic perforated nasal septum? Common yan sa cocaine, right? Papaano ba tinitake tong substance na to? Most of the time, when we talk about your stimulants or uppers, yes, it can be digested, okay? But for cocaine, most of the time, okay, through inhalation dito yan. So, tinitake mo siya dito. Ngayon, because of chronic use, nakakaroon yung tinatawag nating fissure, okay, butas. And that butas is what you call your perforated nasal septum that can also lead to viral or bacterial infection that can lead for a person to suffer or to die, okay? Yan yung problem if there is a prolonged use of this, what we call now your stimulants or uppers. Are you with me? Okay, very good. Again, stimulants or uppers. Now, let's discuss withdrawal naman, okay? When you talk about withdrawal, how do we define it again? Suddenly stops make taking that medication, okay? Suddenly stops in taking that drug. Pag bigla mong hininto ang pagtitik ng stimulants, lalabas ang mga withdrawal symptoms. It can be both physical and it can be psychological. So what are the withdrawal symptoms? First, let's start. Say AIDS. Okay, say AIDS. Okay, patient might feel agitated. Okay, agitation is one of the most common withdrawal symptoms of your stimulants and uppers. Followed by your irritability. Of course, pag may agitation, right? Meron din tayong tag tinatawag na irritability and fatigability. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na irritability and fatigability. Next, a person or a patient may suffer also from Euphor dysphoria. Kanina, euphoria. Kabaliktaran is dysphoria. Ganun lang yun, di ba? Pag tinitake mo, increase. Kapag nag-withdraw, pababa. Para, very good. Okay? I'll repeat, ha? Kapag intoxication, taas. Pero kapag withdrawal, pababa. Ganun ang epekto ng inyong stimulants or uppers. Right? Very good. So, patient experiences agitation, irritability, fatigability, and dysphoria, and also one of the most problem, okay, most especially during withdrawal, is depression. However, that depression can also lead to suicide, okay? Pwede ba siya magpagkamatay kapag nag-withdraw siya sa stimulant? Yes, okay? And of course, ayaw niyan mamatay, right? So, anong gagawin niyan? Magtitake ng magtitake ng shabu, ng cocaine, or any nicotine. Because that is for them, their balance or their equilibrium or homeostasis. Okay? So, question, right? Patient might also experience sleeplessness or hypersomnia. Okay? Upon withdrawal. Very good. Upon withdrawal from a stimulants or uppers. Okay? Now, Patient might also experience unpleasant dreams during withdrawal, okay? Patient might also experience unpleasant dreams during withdrawal. So, sinabi natin kanina, the most complicated symptoms if or during withdrawal is depression, then what will be the drug of choice? Question yan sa board exam, ha? Makinig. What is the drug of choice for a patient who's withdrawing from a stimulants or uppers. Oh, tanong yan sa board exam. The drug of choice, very good, will be your antidepressant. Kasi nga may depression. So, ano bibigay mo sa depression, di ba? Bibigyan mo siya ng antidepressant. You can administer your MAUI, your TCA, or your SSRI. Very good. But the most common that being given is your SSRI, also known as your selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Okay? Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Also known as your SSR. Are you with me? Okay? Very good. Did you get it? Antidepressant. Again, binibigay yan upon withdrawing from a stimulants or uppers. Okay? Upon withdrawing from a stimulants or uppers. Now, aside from antidepressant during withdrawal, what are those other treatments? Earlier, we mentioned about nicotine. Tama? Now, in the case of a higher form of treatment of nicotine, the patient can also undergo this what we call NRT. 
Okay? NRT stands for your nicotine replacement therapy. I'll repeat, ha? NRT stands for your nicotine replacement therapy. Sa mga matatagal na nagtatabako, right? Sa matagal na nagtitake ng Marlboro, sigarilyo, ayan. Okay? What are those examples of your NRT? A patient can be administered nicorette. That is a nicotine gum. Every time that the patient feels craving for that substance, then you can provide nicorette para mag-stop yung craving niya. Okay? Managing control of addiction. Also known as your detoxification. Very good. Okay? You can also provide nicotrol. O, di ba? Ano naman yung nicotrol, sir? This is an example of your nicotine patch. Yung nilalagay sa likod, yung hinahampas, ganyan. That helps managing substance abuse of nicotine. Very good. Okay? Now, of course, for um, cocaine, pag matagal nagtitake ng cocaine, ang problem dyan, di ba? Minention ko kanina, craving. The patient may, man may need to manage their craving. So, for us, of course, hindi natin pwedeng basta-basta i-withdraw sa cocaine ang pasyenteng victim of a stimulant abuse. That's why we administer Parlodel. Okay? Everybody say Parlodel. Okay? Again, everybody say Parlodel. So, magot ha? Comment down below. Comment down below. Everybody, comment down below. I want you to provide uh, uh, your responses by commenting down below. Okay? Say Parlodel. Ah, di ba? That is the brand, and the generic is your bromocriptine. Ayan, bromocriptine. Other therapy that will be included will be what? Other therapy would be your cognitive behavioral therapy to sustain this form of treatment. You can also let the patient undergo this what we call contingency management. When you say contingency management, is that um, if the patient manages not to take any form of stimulants or uppers, they will be rewarded. Okay? Kung baga, bibigyan niya ng mga food stamps. In the US, ganun ang kadalasang ginagawa. Bibigyan siya ng food stamps worth um, $20, right? Pwede siyang makakuha ng uh, free food or uh, free groceries worth of uh, $15. So, ang gagawin niyan is motivate yan na hindi na mag-take ng any form of stimulants or uppers or nicotine, correct? So, habang hindi siya nag-take, so pipi Pirmahan yun, nung nagmamanage sa kanya, ng kanyang healthcare uh, team. And then if, you know, this patient is stopping himself or herself by abusing that particular substances, then he will be rewarded. Okay? And remember, we are changing the behavior of that person, of that client, right? Once that he becomes addictive of stopping himself from taking those stimulants or uppers, then it will become now a habit. And from a long term, he will now abstain or free himself in taking stimulants or uppers. Okay? Very good. And of course, lastly, you have your matrix model. Matrix model is combined, okay, pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment. Most especially, we're talking about complicated cases. Most especially if the patient is already suffering from a complications or of stimulants or abuse of stimulants or uppers. Okay? Are you with me? Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Did you get it? Are you learning? Are you learning? Okay, very good. So you have your NRT, also known as your nicotine replacement therapy, such as your nicotine gum, nicorette, and you also have your nicotine patch or your nicotrol. Okay, very good. Now, question in the board exam. Okay, I'll give you an ample time to read the question. Okay, question in the board exam. A client with a history of abusing amphetamines abruptly stops her drug use. Bigla daw niyang hininto. Anong tawag doon? Withdrawal. Very good. Tawag doon is withdrawal. The nurse, ikaw daw, should give a priority to assessing the client for... Oh... What is your answer? Sumagot. Everyone, again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Very good. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Here are the options. Letter A, depression and suicidal ideation. Letter B, diaphoresis and tachypnea. Letter C, muscle cramping and abdominal pain. Or letter D, tachycardia and euphoric mood. Comment down below. What is your answer? Is it A, depression, 
and suicidal ideation. Letter B, diaphoresis and tachypnea. Letter C, muscle cramping and abdominal pain. Or letter D, tachycardia and euphoric mood. Comment down below. Sumagot, 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 mga anak. Everyone, I want you to participate, ha? Ang makakuha nito, nako, sinasabi ko na talaga, no? Nako, top natcher na. Pangalawa na to, eh. Namumuro ka na, eh. Una, nasagutan mo ng tama, di ba? Itong pangalawa, pag nasagutan mo na to, ay, nako, sinusumpa ko talaga, no? Papasa ka sa board exam. Here in SLRC, we want to make sure that there is an actual application of the topics that's being discussed. So, I want everyone to answer these questions. Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay. Now, I'm actually reading your answers right now. And so far, everyone gets the right answer. Everyone. Okay. Shout out to all our students from Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, Manila, Quezon City, Pampanga, Bataan. Of course, in Visayas, you have Cebu. You have your Bacolod, Iloilo, Misamis Oriental, Misamis in Davao. You also have the Davao City there. All of you, this is SLRC Nation. Everyone is celebrating, right? Early celebration of you, not just, of course, passing, but of course, topping the board exam. And everyone is answering the right, uh, answering it correctly, okay? The best answer, it's no other than letter A, sir. Napaka-bobo naman ng tanong na yan. Oh, hindi pang bobo yung tanong na yan. Sa iba, mahirap yan, okay? Kapag hindi ka nag-enroll nag sa SLRC, malamang, mahirap yan sa iba. But if you enrolled now, this is just only a portion of your review program. So please don't miss calling the number flashing on your screen. Andyan. Okay? Please contact them now. Please make sure that you enroll so that you can start the review program on June 8th. So the answer there, of course, no explanation needed, right? Kaka-discuss lang kanina. It's depression and of course, suicidal ideation. Kapag nasagutan mo yan, hindi kita niloloko, ha? We don't make loko of nurses. Tandaan mo yan. Okay nang maloko ka sa pagmamahal. Pero kapag ikaw naloko ka sa pagmamahal, in SLRC, pupunuan namin yan ng pagmamahal. Kaya mag-enroll ka na. Are you with me? Oh, did you get it? Oh, di ba? Dito puro papasa ka sa nurse kasi marunong kang magmahal. Magmahal sa sarili mo at magmahal sa pasyente mo. Ganon. Okay. Sir, the answer there is depression. Kasi kaya nga siya bibigyan ng antidepressant. O, di ba? So, you can now rationalize your own answer. That's the beauty. All right? Gugulahan ng... Oh, by the way, may nagpapabate, no? From Negros Oriental. O, sasko, umabot na tayong Negros Oriental, okay? We also have... Actually, it's not just in the country or in the Philippines. We are also streamed live across the world. Worldwide na tayo, okay? I've been seeing that there are students from the US of A. We have students from Florida, from Nevada. Bakit tayo nakaabot ng Amerika? Nakakaloka kayo. Okay? We also have students from the Middle East, right? From Dubai. Hi there, from Dubai. We also have students from Thailand. Kapunka. Oh, di ba? <laughs> okay. We also have students from Europe. Nakakaloka kayo. Bakit kayo jumujoin dito? But please, invite them. Siguro may mga nag-invite. Okay? Very good. Now, the next substance will be your inhalants. Okay? Let's move on. Inhalants. When we say inhalants, these substances contain dangerous psychoactive substance that has a mind-altering effect, okay? Meron siyang properties that can trigger a mind-altering effect. Ay, totoo nga, may meron from Europe, Ireland. Ayan, di ba sinabi ko sa inyo? Oo, yes. Hi there. Pwede mag-mention ng name, no? Kay Justin Joffertan. Hello there. Welcome. Are you from Cork, Ireland or from Dublin? Comment down below, huh? Justin. <laughs> from Ireland. We also have students from uh, Spain. Uh, diba? Internationally acclaimed. That is what SLRC is all about, diba? Hindi lang tayo pang Pilipinas, pang buong mundo pa. Oh, diba? Sabayan natin yung COVID, yung pagsikat ng COVID, okay? Very good. Next, um, inhalant. So basically, as you know, substance can be ingested, by the use of the mouth, right? Sometimes pwede siyang i-inhale, correct? Men, pwede rin siyang ina-IV. So, for inhalants, right? Most common will be, what are those examples of your inhalants, right? Now, your inhalants would include, of course, everybody say, ano? 
sumagot ha say ano oh belfast he's from belfast inhalants what are those examples of your inhalants everybody say ano very good everybody say ano sir ano ano a n o ano oh di ba ano you have your anesthetics okay that's one example the next will be your nitrates Oh, di ba? Pang mayaman, nitrates. And another example will be your organic solvents. Oh, di ba? Pang mayaman. So you have your anesthetics, nitrates, and lastly, you have your organic solvents. Correct? Anesthetics is used to induce anesthesia, right? Nitrates, example, will be your fertilizers. You have your sodium nitrate, your potassium nitrate. Those are examples of your nitrates, right? aerosols, right? And of course, your organic solvents example would be your volatile thinner, correct? Paint, yan. Rugby, example yan. Varnish, correct? Gasoline, gas, um, aerosols, yan. Those are examples of your organic solvents. And that can be taken through inhalation, okay? Kapag tinik yan, question, ha? What part of the brain is affected? If the patient is suffering from an inhalant abuse. Question is a board exam, huh? Which part of your brain? Oh, what region of your brain? Oh, localized tayo. Which region of your brain is affected? If we're talking about your inhalation. Ano yung saan siya dumadirekto? Kanina stimulants, central nervous system. Yes or no? Yes, sir. CNS po yun. Inhalants, which region of the brain? Is it temporal lobe? Okay, is it parietal lobe or is it occipital lobe? Comment down below for your answer. Comment down below. Is it parietal lobe? Is it temporal lobe or is it your occipital lobe? Ah, we're talking about lobes, ha, mga anak. Comment down below. Okay, comment down below. Is it very good? I've been seeing right answers there, okay? Saan makikita yung pinopost ninyo? Sa ang lobe yan? Di ba? Tama kayo, yes. Is it parietal lobe, temporal lobe, or occipital lobe? Comment down below. The answer there, it's none other than your occipital lobe. Very good, okay? Very good. That is occipital lobe. Now, we all know that your occipital lobe is responsible for visual, right? It is also responsible for your balance. And of course, coordination. And it is also responsible for your speech. That's why, what are the intoxication effects? Okay? Intoxication effects of your inhalants. That's why nagkakaroon ng blurring of vision. Okay? Blurred vision because it directly affects your occipital lobe, which is responsible for your visual or your vision. Very good. Okay? Another one will be your lack of coordination. Okay? Lack of coordination because it affects the occipital lobe. Next is unsteady gait. Okay? Lack of coordination, also known as your ataxia. Sometimes they say it's slowed movement, right? That's fine. That's okay. Unsteady gait. Patient might also, or a client might also suffer from slurred speech. Ayan, slurred, slurred, yung mabagal magsalita, okay? O yung pa, ano, paputol-putol, yan, slurred speech, correct? Also common to a bipolar patients, right? Intoxication effect will also include dizziness, one of the symptoms, right? Intoxication, one of the symptoms. And drowsiness, aside from dizziness, there's also drowsiness. Isulat mo, ha? Isulat mo. Very good. Next, patient might also experience or manifest an uninhibited or uncontrolled behavior. Okay? Ayan ang tinatawag nating maladaptive pattern of behavior. Okay? Uninhibited behavior. Examples will be covered or discussed on your national review. So don't miss to enroll. Okay? Very good. Patients might also feel sensation of floating. Oh, lutang. Yan, di ba? Yung pag tinatawag mo, huy, huy. 
parang hindi sumasagot, they become unresponsive, right? Or sumasagot sila, pero mali naman ang sinasagot. Tama ba ako? Oh, ibig sabihin, they lack focus, they lack attention because they are intoxicated to inhalants, correct? Which is sensation of floating as one of its intoxication effects, okay? Now, let's discuss withdrawal. Again, how do we define withdrawal? Suddenly stops taking that medication. Again, withdrawal, suddenly stops taking that medication or substance. What are those withdrawal symptoms? Patient might experience within the first 24 to 48 hours, they might experience irritability. Okay? Physical or psychological? Very good. Psychological effect. Aside from irritability, the patient or a person or a client might also suffer from diaphoresis. Again, that is after the last dose. Ha, tinanong ito sa board exam. So I want you to listen and I want you to pay attention. Okay? Irritability, diaphoresis, patient might, might also experience tremors. Okay? And violent behavior. Now, after 24 to 48 hours, okay, patient might also experience depression violent behavior, and of course, seizure. Ayan na. Seizure upon withdrawing from inhalants. That's why, what is the drug of choice that can be administered? That will be your magnesium sulfate. And we all know that magnesium sulfate is poisonous, right? If in case that the patient suffers from a poisonous effect of your magnesium sulfate to treat the withdrawal symptom, which is seizure, what will be the drug of choice? That's going to be your, very good, calcium gluconate. Oh, na-apply na natin, no? Antidote. Nakuha. Okay? Antidote will be your calcium gluconate. Okay? Are you with me? Sir, napakadali po. Yes, napakadali lang itong mga konsepto na to. Okay? Next will be the treatment for inhalants. The only thing that you would need to remember is you can administer. Ito na yung sagot nyo kanina, right? Treatment can be administered by providing benzodiazepines. Okay? Ano ba yung mga benzodiazepines na yan? Okay? You have your PAM and you have your LAM. Uh, everybody say PAM. Okay? Again, everybody comment down below. Say PAM. Say LAM. This is the treatment, ha? Huh? Treatment if the patient is suffering from intoxication of your inhalants. Say PAM. Say LAM. Uh, you have your Fluraze, PAM. Oxaze, PAM. You also have your Loraze, Pam. Next will be your Diaze, Pam. Followed by your Clonaze, Pam. Next will be your Alprazo, Lam. Oh, dila mo. Ilabas mo yung dila mo, ha? Followed by your Triazo, Lam. Oh, di ba? Fluraze, Pam. Oxaze, Pam. Loraze, Pam. Diaze, Pam. Clonaze, Pam. Alprazo, lam. Triazo, lam. O, oh, di ba? Ilabas mo yung dila mo, ha? Make sure na nilalabas mo yung dila mo, ha? Nakikita kita. So, please, make sure to participate, okay? O, oh, di ba? Sir, parang similar siya sa pag ginagamit kapag may anxiety. Yes, the answer is yes. Kapag may anxiety, you treat them with anxiolytics. Those are your benzodiazepines, Okay. Very good. I'll repeat, ha? Fluraze, Pam. Oxaze, Pam. Loraze, Pam. Diaze, Pam. Clonaze, Pam. Alprazo, Lam. Triazo, Lam. Alprazo, Lam. Ganon, no, di ba? Okay, pa-shout out from Montana, USA. Montana. O, di ba? Parang si Hannah, Montana. Tama ba? <laughs> Montana, USA. And also, there are folks who's also watching from New York. Hi, everyone from New York. The city that never sleeps. Oh, sabi, di ba? Again, everyone say, Sinsha. Sinsha. Oh, you have your stimulants. You have your inhaler. <laughs> okay? You have your... Very good. So, tapos na tayo, right? Stimulants or uppers, inhalants. Now, let's proceed to the next. That is your... Okay. Narcotics, opioids, or downers. Oh, di ba? Some of it, they may say it can be a CNS depressant. Yes, that is correct. Okay? Other term is it can be a CNS depressant. Yun yung effect niya. Kalina si stimulants pataas. 
Therefore, si narcotics, opioids, or downers ang effect naman niya is pababa. Uulitin ko ha. Si stimulants ang effect niya para or simpa. Very good. It's simpa, pataas. Correct? Now, ang effect naman ng inyong narcotics, opioids is pababa. Kaya other term or other name for your narcotics, opioids is downers. Oh, di ba? Very good. Narcotics, opioids, or downers. In short, it is a CNS depressant. Ano ba yung effect niya? Narcotics, right? Specifically narcotics. Analgesics, they relieve pain. Di ba? They also induces euphoric effect or euphoria. It also creates mood and changes the patient from time to time. It has an anesthetic effect. Oh, very good. Very good. Narcotics, opioids, also known as your downers. Nagkaintindihan, mga anak. Correct? So, ano ba yung mga examples ng tinatawag natin narcotics, opioids, or downers? So, you have your lahat ng merong letter O. O. Everybody say O. O. You have your morphine. You also have your heroin. You also have your Codeine. Iba yung cocaine sa codeine. Magkaiba yun, ha? That's two different things. Okay? Kasi si cocaine is a party drug. While codeine is a CNS depressant. Okay? Oh. You also have your deme roll. Next will be your menthol. Di ba? Next is your hydrocodone. Ah, are you with me? You also have your oxymorphone. Ah, eto common to. Another example of your narcotics, opioids, or downers will be your trauma dole. Ayan. And of course, you have your hydromorphone. Food. Ganon, ha? Para mas madali mong ma matandaan or ma-memorize or ma-recall. Lahat ng may O. Uh, let's have a recap. You have your morphine, heroin, codeine, demerol, menthol, hydrocodone, oxymorphone, tramadol, oxycodone, and hydromorphone. Okay? And another example of your narcotics or opioids will be your methadone. However, methadone is considered as the most therapeutic, most especially if it's being given or administered slowly to the patient. Again, ha? It is a narcotic, okay? It is a narcotic, but it is considered as the most therapeutic narcotic. Kasi pwede mo siyang ibigay paunti-unti kapag nag-withdraw ang pasyente. Okay? Are you with me? Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay, very good. Okay, also, before we continue, I want to shout out sa mga friends natin. We are live in the city of love and fashion. That is Paris. Hey there, bourgeois. Tama, di ba, bourgeois? And we also have viewers from Poland, Dzień Dobry. Oh, di ba, Dzień Dobry. Okay, so all our Latin viewers, hola, hola. Pa-shout out po. Ang daming nagko-comment, okay? But we only have a couple of few minutes. I know you're enjoying the lecture right now. So please don't forget to like and share our FB page. Again, it's SLRC Nation. And use the hashtag SLRC Digital so that everyone will have an access. And we are waiting for our number one streaming as uh, for Instagram. Ah, ganun ang level natin Instagram, okay? Very good. Now, let's continue and let's proceed with narcotics, opioids, and downers. So, what are those intoxication effects? Okay? So, ang effect kanina is pataas ng stimulants. For intoxication of for narcotics, since it's a CNS depressant, it is a downer, simpa or para simpa. The answer is para simpa. Ibig sabihin, pababa. Nakukuha? Okay. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo na tinatawag na kanina, hypervigilance, right? Sa stimulant. Dito naman will be Confusion and apathy. Kanina, si stimulant, tachycardia. Dito, bradycardia. So, nakukuha na, di ba? Kanina, dilated pupils because of vasoconstriction. Eh, ang effect naman ngayon, downer, right? So, parasympathetic. 
vasodilation. Very good. Kaya kanina, si stimulant, constrict, uh, kanina is ang um, dilated pupil dito sa narcotics will be constricted pupil, also known as your meiosis. Oh, diba? Everybody say meiosis. Okay? Regards to, uh, by the way, regards to John Chidoro. Hi there, Sir John. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying watching this lecture series, okay? Hi there. St. John, uh, Sir John Chidoro is one of our directors managing our Palawan site and Butuan site. Uh, that's one, one of my favorite cities, Butuan. Kasi maraming, anong buto, hindi buto, maraming friendly na people. Anong buto ang pinagsasasabi nyo dyan? Okay? Very good. Next, intoxication effects of your narcotics opioids will be, so you have your confusion apathy, you also have bradycardia, you also have meiosis or constricted pupil, Patient might also suffer from hypokinesis or slowed movement. Mabagal. Kanina, mabilis, right? Pero ngayon, mabagal na. Next will be decreased perception of pain, right? Eh, analgesic nga, eh, analgesia, right? Next, you have euphoria. If there's a commonality between your psychoactive substances such as stimulants and narcotics, it has both euphoric effect. Ah, di ba? Euphoria. Another intoxication effects of your narcotics will be drowsiness, di ba? And of course, there is hypotension, pababa. Kanina, elevated vital signs. Ngayon, decreased vital signs, okay? Very good. That's why you have hypotension and you have your hypothermia. Patient might also suffer from what? Slurred speech, okay? Intoxication of your narcotics, opioids, and downers. Patient might also experience excessive salivation, naglalaway. Mo? Kapag intoxicated siya sa yung tinatawag na narcotics, opioids, and downers. And prolonged use of your narcotics, opioids, and downers, kanina, chronic imperforated septum. Tama? Sa stimulants or uppers. While the patient is taking narcotics, opioids, and downers, if it's prolonged, Masyado ng mahaba, okay? Prolonged use can lead to a complication. And that complication is known as your chronic cardiac and respiratory depression. I'll repeat, ha? Chronic and cardiac, uh, chronic cardiac and respiratory depression. I'll repeat, chronic cardiac and respiratory depression. Uulitin ko, ha? Prolonged use, okay? Or complication, of your narcotics opioid downers would be chronic cardiac and respiratory depression. Nakakaintindihan tayo? Yes or no? Yes. Very good. That's why the antidote for narcotic toxicity, okay, kasi poisonous din ng narcotics, right? What do you administer? What will you give? What will you provide? The antidote for narcotic toxicity will be no other than your Narcan or your Naloxone. I'll repeat, ha? that's going to be your Narcan and your Naloxone. We will be discussing the mechanism of action of Narcan on your national review. Okay? Very good. How about withdrawal, sir? Okay? So there are two phases of withdrawal from your narcotics, opioids, or downers. You have the early and you have the late signs. You have the early signs and your late signs. The early signs occurs after six to eight hours after the last dose, okay? Ano yung kadalasang lumalabas? Patient might experience epiphora. When you say epiphora, this is lacrimation, also known as your watery eyes. Parang luha ng luha, but they're not really crying. It's just, it's an effect of withdrawing from narcotics, opioids, or downers, okay? Next, you have your rhinorrhea, okay? Also known as excessive mucus due to withdrawal within six to eight hours. Patient might also experience piloerection, di ba? Pag nanonood ka ng mga scary movies, para kang kinikilabutan, that is what you call piloerection, also known as your goosebumps. Patient might experience within the 6 to 8 hours sweating or excessive sweating. And aside from sweating, patient might also experience yawning, yung hikab ng hikab, right? Early withdrawal, yan. That is an early withdrawal sign. Okay? Upon withdrawing from your narcotics, opioids, or your downers. Patient might also experience nausea and vomiting. 
Okay? Nausea and vomiting. And of course, you also have diarrhea upon withdrawing from your narcotics, opioids, or downers. Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay? Very good. Now, if the patient still withdrawing, after two to seven days after the last dose, patient might also experience insomnia. Okay? Insomnia, still patient will experience nausea and anxiety. So again, I'll repeat ha, ulitin ko. After two to seven days, that is the late, right? Late signs. Patient might experience insomnia, nausea, and anxiety upon last dose. How many days? Two to seven days after the last dose. So ang tawag dyan, late signs of narcotic withdrawal. Okay? Do you understand? Are you with me? Yes, very good, okay? Now, what will be the treatment if the patient is withdrawing from narcotics, opioids, or downers? Of course, treatment will be, for, most especially for withdrawal, right? The drug of choice will be your methadone. Ah, oh, di ba? Methadone that would maintain abstinence, most especially if the patient is taking heroin. Ah, oh, di ba? That is the, one of the most common, no? Heroin, okay? That is a narcotic, opioids, and downers. Methadone ang binibigay upon withdrawal, ha? Listen to me. Upon withdrawal. Pag narcotic toxicity, bibigyan mo ng Narcan. Pero pag narcotic withdrawal, bibigyan mo ng methadone. Okay? That is methadone. Aside from administering methadone, of course, you can also administer buprenorphine. Buprenorphine that can be given under the tongue that would less likely to cause respiratory depression. Remember that? The patient is susceptible for a chronic cardiac and respiratory depression upon toxicity of narcotics. That's why in order for you to treat that, you can administer buprenorphine, uh, buprenorphine under the tongue of the patient. Okay? You can also administer naltrexone, Revia. Most especially if the patient is taking opioids, right? You can administer naltrexone, Revia. Most especially, it has it blocks the effects of opiates inside the body. It blocks the effects of opiates inside the body. Now, this is most especially for chronic respiratory depression, okay? Chronic respiratory depression, you can administer oxygen therapy, Aside from oxygen therapy, okay, you can also help the patient manage their way, right, to prevent respiratory depression, okay? You can also administer, most especially in emergency cases, you can administer CPAP or BiPAP. They call that BiPAP. That's continuous patent airway for those who's suffering from a chronic respiratory depression, okay? You can also administer or give surgically inhaled medication surgery inhaled medication to treat chronic respiratory depression and of course other therapy would include cognitive behavioral therapy behavioral therapy and you can also administer or provide them series of treatment as they're withdrawing from narcotics or opioids okay so any questions none now here's my question to you Question in the board exam. Sumagot, ha? I want you to participate. Everybody, a client is addicted to morphine. Ah, is being treated for withdrawal symptoms. The drug commonly administered for opiate withdrawal is... Oh, ano daw ang binibigay kapag nag-withdraw from narcotics, opioids, or downers? I want everyone to answer. Comment down below, ha? Sumagot, everyone. Please comment down below. Sumagot, ha? Sumagot. What is your answer? Kapag nag-withdraw from a substance known as your narcotics, opioids, or downers. Okay? Narcotics, opioids, or downers. Comment down below. A client is, uh, is it A, transine? Options are A, transine, B, methadone, B, C, Narcan, or letter D, antabuse. Okay? Again, comment down below. Sumagot. I want everyone to answer. A client is addicted to morphine. Is being treated for withdrawal symptoms. The drug commonly administered for operate withdrawal is... Is it A, transine? B, methadone? C, Narcan? Or letter D, antabuse? Napaka-napakadaling sagutin ng tanong na ito. Yes or no? Okay? What is your goal? To top the board exam. Okay? So... 
rationalization will be given on your national review. But just to give an answer to this particular question, I know those answers are coming in. Sige, sumagot pa. I'll give you an ample time. Is it A, transine? Letter B, methadone? C, narcan? Or letter D, antabuse? Comment down below for your answer. Again, I want everyone to answer this question. We only have a limited time. Sumagot. Everybody, sumagot. Everyone, sumagot. Okay? Very good. I think I've been seeing a lot of good answers here. Very good, guys. Okay? Sumagot lahat. Everybody say, sinsha. Sinsha. So you have your stimulants, inhalants, narcotics, opiates, and downers. But to answer this question, the answer here would be, very good. Since sagot nyo ay letter B, it's methadone. O, oh, diba? Na Pakadali, sir. Eh, paano kapag toxicity? Eh, sir, ang galing naman. Narcan ang ibibigay mo. Again, if we're talking about narcotic toxicity, that will be provided or a narcan will be given to those patients. Okay? Are you with me, SLRC? What is your goal? To top the board exam. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yes. Okay. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Now, Another prescription or common substances that is being abused will be your sedative hypnotics, okay? Sedative hypnotics are a class of drugs that can cause a dose-dependent depression. So parang CNS depressant din siya. The answer is yes. Why? Because they induce a sleep and unconscious with increasing the dose, also known as your CNS depressant. Ganun din yung effect niya, right? Now, most of these sedative hypnotic drugs affects your GABAergic transmission, GABAergic transmission, and increase the inhibition of your neuronal excitability. Now, what are those examples of your sedative hypnotics? What are those examples of your sedative hypnotics? Examples, you have your barbiturates, and you also have your benzodiazepine. Why? Because both of them has a sedative and hypnotic effect to the body. Oh, di ba? I'll repeat, ha? Your barbiturates and your benzodiazepine has a sedative or hypnotic effect. Oh, para kang sinisiduce. Oh. Ano ba yung mga examples ng inyong benzodiazepine, di ba? Yan yung PAM, LAM, Florazepam, Oxazepam, Diazepam, Clonazepam, Alpra. Oh, alam mo na, PAM, mm, ikaw na. Sige, ikaw na, tumuloy. Ikaw na, di ba? Yung mga yun yun. Eh, how about yung barbiturates mo? Pinsan niya ngayon si barbiturates. Yan yung mga gamot na naghuhuli or uh, medications or prescriptions or substances that ends with tal. Say tal. Kanina, pam, lam. Ngayon naman, tal. Uh, say tal. Uh, ayan, sumasagot na yung iba. Sir, alam ko na yan. Oh, eh, very good. So you have your phenobarbital, pentobarbital, barbital, cicobarbital, brevital. Amobarbital. You have your butabarbital. O, oh, di ba? Alam mo na yan. Lahat na may tal. Very good. Again, you have your phenobarbital. Pentobarbital. Barbital. You have your brevital. You have your amobarbital. Allobarbital. And you have your butabarbital. Basta lahat ng merong tal. Ganon. Okay? Yun lang ang i-memorize mo, ha? Ah, sir, basta pag may tal, it's sedative hypnotics. The answer is, yes, huwag ka na mag-isip. Ang effect niyan, sedative hypnotics. Okay? And of course, you have your benzodiazepine. Ganyan ang i-effect din yan. So, alam niyo naman yung mga examples. Lahat ng may PAM at lahat ng may LAM. Okay? Lorazepam, Oxazepam, Lorazepam, Diazepam, Clonazepam, Alpam. Prazo, lam. Ayan. And you have your triazo, lam. Ganon. Okay? Napaka-easy. Here in SLRC, we will be teaching you a lot of strategies and techniques. You don't need to memorize all these medications or all these substances. Ang tatandaan mo lang, tal, pam, lam. Ganon. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan tayo. What is your goal? 
to top the board exam. Now, to give you the mechanism of action of your benzodiazepines, particularly inside the body, yan yung mga PAM at LAM. Paano ba siya nagkakaroon ng sedative or hypnotic effects? Of course, when we say benzodiazepine, it indirectly uh, considered as a GABA receptor agonist, okay? Which means that it binds to your GABA A receptors. So what happens? Kapag nagbind siya sa iyong GABA A receptors, there will be an increased affinity of your GABA to find or to bind to your GABA A receptors. So what will happen now is it will increase the GABA action. When you say GABA action, we're talking about inhibitory, correct? It inhibits. It gives an increased GABA action or GABA effect that, lead na, that leads now to your increase in the frequency of opening of these chloride channels. Increase in opening or frequency of chloride channels leading to a decreased neuronal excitability thus resulting to a decreased amount of your REM or your rapid eye movement sleep in the sleep cycle. Yan ng effect ng benzodiazepine. That's why it induces sleep. So what are the effects? So meaning, what are the intoxication effects of your sedative hypnotics after knowing the pathophysiology or the mechanism of action of your benzodiazepine inside your body? Okay? Patient will now experience facial flushing. Right? Facial flushing. Aside from facial flushing, patient may also experience ataxia. Okay? Ataxia or lack of coordination. Patient might also experience unsteady gait, slurred speech. Okay? Hypotension. Hypotension. Okay? Facial flushing, lack of coordination, unsteady gait, slurred speech, and hypotension. Now, if the patient experiences and suffers from an overdose, okay, overdose of your sedative hypnotics, patient will experience what? Confusion and lethargy. And the antidote, if in case that the patient experiences, right, a poisonous effect of your sedative hypnotics, because this is considered as what? As poisonous, right? You can administer now flumazenil, okay? Everybody say flumazenil. Again, flumazenil is administered as an antidote for benzodiazepine toxicity. Benzodiazepine, we're talking about your PAM, we're talking about your LAM. Okay, if the patient or a client experiences a benzodiazepine toxicity, you can administer flumazenil. Now, when you say flumazenil, it has, or ang, ang, ang action yan, it has this what we call your competitive inhibition. And when you say competitive inhibition, it means that it interrupts the chemical pathway. Okay, ginugulo niya. Okay? Ginugulo niya itong mga sedative hypnotics na to. We're talking about your benzodiazepine specifically, such as your fluoracepam, oxazepam, diazepam. Okay? That prevents, of course, the patient to experience poisonous effect of this substance. Okay? Are you with me? Okay? Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay. Now, let's talk about withdrawal. Oh, sir, nag-withdraw. So, bigla niyang in-stop ang pagtitake ng tinatawag nating sedative hypnotics. What are those withdrawal symptoms? Okay. Withdrawal symptoms, of course, would include hand tremors. Patient might also experience anxiety, nausea, vomiting, most common upon withdrawal. Patient might also experience diarrhea or delirium upon withdrawing from sedative hypnotics, okay? And of course, patient might experience tachycardia upon withdrawal from sedative hypnotics. Patient might also experience vomiting. But the most serious, oh, ayan ha, common yan sa board exam, put a star, like highlight that. The most common withdrawal effects of your sedative hypnotics will be seizure. O, tatanungin kita ha, I want you to answer and I want you to pay attention. Look at me. Kapag may seizure, ano ang binibigay na withdrawal for, for that withdrawal symptoms? What will be the drug of choice? Okay. Drug of choice upon withdrawal. Ano yung ibibigay mo, mga anak? Drug of choice upon withdrawal is what? Drug of choice of withdrawal is, I want you to answer, that's going to be your? Okay. Drug of choice upon withdrawal. 
seashore. Ano yung binibigay na gamot? That is magnesium sulfate. Very good. Again, the drug of choice will be your magnesium sulfate. And what is the antidote of magnesium sulfate? That will be now your calcium gluconate. Ganon. Di ba? Very easy. Sub substance use disorder is very easy to understand and very easy to recall. Okay? Very good. That will be now your magnesium sulfate. Now, aside from administering or treating that seizure, you can also subject that patient to a detoxification by means of tapering. Tapering, administering, when we say tapering, administering doses of that medication that is on a safety precaution upon detoxification. Okay? Safety precaution upon detoxification. Question in the board examination. Okay, so magot ha. Again, test taking strategy, mga anak. Common question in the board exam. Common question in the board examination. A client with a history of abusing barbiturates abruptly stops taking medication. Now, the nurse should give priority. When you say priority, okay, ito ba'y nakakamatay? Yes. Kapag hindi mo pinigyan ng pansin as a nurse, then the patient will die. Okay? So, I'll read the question once again. Ha? A client with a history of abusing barbiturates abruptly stops taking the medication. The nurse should give priority to assessing the client for, is it A, depression and suicidal ideation? Letter B, tachycardia and diarrhea. Letter C, muscle cramping and abdominal pain or letter D, tachycardia and euphoric mood. Oh, ang makasagot nito, nurse na. Again ha, suddenly stops withdrawing. Oh, di ba? Kanina, diniscuss natin, withdrawing from your sedative hypnotics. Ito yung mga symptoms. So what is your answer to this question? Balikan natin yung question ha. Oh, what is your answer? Sumagot, ha? Sumagot. Ano yung priority mo? Priority, ha? Priority. I want you to take a look at the withdrawal symptoms. Ha? Withdrawal symptoms. Mm. Okay? Priority. Sumagot, lahat. Ano yung priority mo? Physiologic or psychologic? Test-taking strategy. Physiologic or psychologic? Ano ang mas uunahin mo? Physiologic or psychologic? Of course, you will prioritize what? Physiologic. Physiologic tayo. Okay? Physiologic. So when you stay physiologic, anong uunahin mo? Diba? Physiologic. Very good. It's physiologic, sir. Tsaka wala naman akong na-mention na depression eh. Kanina yun, diba? Kapag nag-withdraw sa stimulants. But we're now discussing sedative hypnotics. Did I mention about depression? I did not. That's why letter A is incorrect. Maling sagot ang letter A. So what is the best answer? Is it letter B, C, or D? Okay? Very good. The correct answer this time is no other than letter B, tachycardia and diarrhea. Okay? It's tachycardia and tachy and diarrhea. I'll repeat, ha? Tachycardia and diarrhea. Oh, di ba? Oh, I think some of you already got the right answer. Very good. Kanina si depression, if withdrawing from a stimulant. But we are now discussing your sedative hypnotics. Okay? Nakukuha ba? Are you with me? Am I with you? Okay, very good. I think a lot of you got the answer correctly. So we are still streaming live. And thank you for all those who's watching um, this topic. Everybody say, Sinsha. Sinsha, sir. Madaling madali na po ang board exam sa amin. Of course, okay. Now, the next will be your hallucinogens. When you say hallucinogens, right, ano ba yung effect ng hallucinogens? When we talk about hallucinogens from the word itself, ang effect niya, hallucination, which means that the effect of your hallucinogens is that it blurs reality. It can cause visual hallucination, right? Also known as your psychedelics, okay? It impairs or it, it, it affects or it gives visual hallucination. And of course, um, it has a psychedelic effect, okay? Psychedelic effect. Kasi nga, it can cause visual hallucination, correct? Okay. 
Sinsha. Puro kayo sinsha na ng sinsha. You have your <laughs> stimulants, inhalants, narcotics, sedative hypnotics, and of course, the, the second to the last will be your hallucinogens. Okay? So, hallucinogens. Okay. Ag uh, sinsha kayo ng sinsha. <laughs> oh, diba? I mean, that's the SLRC effect, right? Diba? For some, napakahirap ng substance use disorder, but now you, you find it very easy. Right? In just only for two hours, you've already mastered, okay, the substance use disorders and you know how to answer questions related to substance use or substance abuse. Correct? Very good. Okay? Now, what are those examples of your hallucinogens? Okay? Examples of your hallucinogens will be your ketamine. You also have your mescaline. Also, you another example of your hallucinogen will be your psilocybin. Okay? Yan dried mushroom okay psilocybin psilocybin is a dried mushroom are you with me okay nagkakaintindihan pa yes another example would be your pcp ah hallucinogens pala ang pcp sir the answer is yes okay so you have your pcp also known as your fencyclidine and you also have your lsd known as your lysergic acid dithylamide Okay, lysergic acid dithylamide. But the most common form of your hallucinogens will be your, ito, lumalabas ito sa board exam, ha? Also known as your cannabis sativa. O, oh, di ba? Cannabis sativa. Comment down below. Other name for your cannabis sativa will be your marijuana. O, oh, di ba? Marijuana. Everybody say cannabis. Comment down below, ha? Everybody say cannabis. Comment down below. Everybody say cannabis, sativa. Okay? Comment down below. Mag-comment kayo, guys. Again, say cannabis. Okay? Say cannabis, sativa. Ah, di ba? Also known as marijuana. Okay? Very good. Marijuana yan. Okay? Cannabis sativa, also known as your marijuana. Oh, sumagot lahat, everyone. Say cannabis. In your DSM-5 or Diagnostic Statistics Manual for Mental Disorder 5th edition, okay, it is now considered as your cannabis use disorder. Okay? Cannabis use disorder. Didiscuss natin yan, ha? Also known as your marijuana. Common yan sa board exam. Remember? That's the most commonly used, popular yan. Yang marijuana na yan. Okay? Very good. Do you want to know more about cannabis sativa? Are you with me? Okay. Now, cannabis sativa is from a hashish. Okay? Known as hashish. Meaning, it's a dry resin. Ang dry resin na yan is what you called your cannabinoids, okay? Cannabinoids. Now, I'll repeat. Cannabis is one of the most popular psychoactive substance worldwide, how worldwide. And madalas na gumagamit niyan is mga teenagers, okay? Mga teenagers. Now, your cannabis is the most addictive. It has the most addictive quality uh, qualities if it's prolonged use can suffer from dependency, also known as addiction. I'll repeat, ha? Prolonged use can lead to addiction or dependency or substance dependency. Nakukuha? ha? Now, cannabis comes from the flowers of cannabis sativa, okay? That has an oil with concentration of what you call now tiny fat soluble molecules known as your cannabinoids. Okay? Cannabinoids. Everybody say cannabinoids. Sumagot, lahat. Say cannabinoids. Everyone, sumagot. Everybody, say it. Cannabinoids. Sumagot, sumagot. Cannabinoids. Okay? Okay. Cannabinoids. Everyone, say cannabinoids. Sumagot. Comment down below. Again, we are streaming live. We are um, we are available by clicking the SLRC Nation page in Facebook. Okay? Everybody say cannabinoids. 
I want you to be proactive. I want you to answer. I want you to respond. Please comment down below, okay, for your responses. Say cannabinoids, okay? Again, say cannabinoids. Everybody, cannabinoids. Say cannabinoids. All right? Now, cannabinoids, there are three main forms of cannabinoids, okay? As you can see on your screen, you have your THC, also known as your tetrahydrocannabinol. You also have your CBD, known as your cannabidiol. And the third is your cannabinol. So THC, that's your tetrahydrocannabinol. Your CBD, also known as your cannabidiol. And the third component is your cannabinol, also known as your CBN. Okay, These are the three components of your cannabinoids. Nakukuha? Yes, very good. Since madali nyo maintindihan, again, this is the components of your cannabinoids. Now, when we talk about cannabinoids, of course, there are two types of your receptors. You have your CB1, that's your cannabinoid receptor 1, and your CBD2, which is your cannabinoid receptor 2. Now, your THC has the component of your CB1 and your CB2, okay? Those are your cannabinoids receptors. O, diba? Tinanong yan sa Miss Universe. Tinanong yan kay Catriona Gray. What is your opinion about legalization of marijuana? Diba? Tinanong yan sa board exam, right? Ay, hindi pa sa board exam. Tinanong yan sa Miss Universe kay Catriona Gray. O, sagot ni Catriona. I'm for it being used for medical use and not for recreational use. Because I think if people were to argue, how about alcohol and cigarettes? Well, everything is good, but in moderation. Oh, di ba? Oh, nga, sir, bakit meron sinasabing recreational use at meron din sinasabi na substance or medical use of marijuana? Di ba? Um, we are in the process of approving the use of medical marijuana in the country. I'll repeat, huh? most of the doctors agreed, okay? Most of the doctors agreed that they will be using medical marijuana. Now, because of the component of your cannabinoids, you will have a better understanding about the medical use of your marijuana. So, you have your THC that comprises of your CB1 and your CB2 receptors, okay? Now, the medical component of your cannabinoids will be your cannabidiol, okay? Ayun yung ginagamit natin for medical use. And for your THC or your tetrahydrocannabinol, ito naman yung ginagamit for your recreational use that serves as a psychoactive substance. Once that it affects directly your body. Okay? Very good. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Now, your CB1, these are the cannabinoids receptors. Your cannabinoids receptors has its two types, your CB1 and your CB2. Your CB1 binds in cannabinol, which directly affects your central nervous system, and your CB2 or your cannabinoid receptor 2 binds in cannabidiol, that affects directly your PNS or your peripheral nervous system. Not just your PNS, but it also directs your immune system. That explains now the link in activating this body opioid system, which leads to the different intoxication symptoms of your hallucinogens, particularly your, very good, your marijuana. Okay, patient might experience relaxation, euphoria, lowered inhibition, increased appetite, conjunctival redness, uh, redness, also known as your bloodshot eye, social withdrawal associated with other symptoms, which includes paranoid ideation or mild hallucination. Patient might also experience anxiety because remember, it affects your CNS or your central nervous system. Yes or no? Yes, okay. Patient might also experience intense feelings, also known as trips. Patient might also experience depression and episodes of memory loss, also known as your 
amnesia. Okay? Again, if the patient is intoxicated from your hallucinogens. And sir, paano naman po if the patient is withdrawing from your hallucinogens? Of course, the patient would experience muscle aches, right? Patient might experience anxiety upon withdrawal. And also, patient might experience sweating and tremors. Aside from tremors, patient might also experience lethargy upon withdrawing from hallucinogens. And the worst is patient can also experience or suffers from depression okay, upon withdrawing from your hallucinogens. That's why the drug of choice that can be administered will be antipsychotics to treat right? To treat hallucinations, correct? You can administer either typical or atypical antipsychotics. You can also administer antidepressants if the patient suffers from withdrawing from hallucinogens. And you can also administer anti-anxiety. Those are the pharmacologic treatment. How about the non-pharmacologic -ph treatment? You can subject that patient for a medical detoxification, Right? It should be detoxification, huh? medical detoxification. Patient may also undergo behavioral therapy. And of course, they need a support group in treating uh, withdrawal from your halocinogens. Okay? Are you with me? Okay? So let's go and wrap up our discussion. I know we have one more interesting topic that is alcoholism. But for now, since this is just a free trial of our lecture, I would like to congratulate every one of you in advance. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Again, I'll repeat, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Okay, so these are some of the few notes that will be discussed and that will be shared on your actual review. So I want everyone to enroll. The classes starts on June 8th and I will be discussing one of the most interesting topics that's alcoholism on your national review. Okay, so I want you to, to take a look at the notes that I'm actually sharing right now. This is about alcoholism. Again, I will discuss this on your national review. So please keep um, joining or watching our F SLRC Nation Facebook page and Please make sure that you will enroll. Again, classes will start on June 8th. Again, SLRC, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Again, what is your goal? To top the board exam. Again, everyone, I want you to participate. To top the board exam. Okay? I'm now sharing again the notes for your alcoholism, and this will be discussed on your national review. So without any further ado, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you for joining this quick session. And I'd like to say thank you also to all our national directors for SLRC. And we will see you guys soon in your board examination, okay? But before leaving this session, the most important thing that I would like you to remember, okay, is SINSHA. Again, say SINSHA. SINSHA stands for stimulants, inhalants, narcotics, sedative hypnotics, hallucinogens, and alcoholism. And that wraps up my discussion on substance use disorder. So thank you guys for joining this session. I had a wonderful time. Thank you for being interactive in participating in this session. And I will see you on your national review. Again, my name is Sir Meg. You can call me Domingo Bautista or you can call me Sir Meg. And please make sure to enroll. The enrollment starts on June 8th or the classes will start on June 8th. Thank you, guys, and have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone.